Good afternoon. Welcome aboard Hydro One. My name is Dee Version, and I'll be your pilot today as we explore Colorado water. And I'm Wes Water, your co-pilot. Dee, we've reached cruising altitude. Thanks, Wes. Folks, say goodbye to the Front Range, where 80% of Colorado's population lives. We're heading west, west, right over the Continental Divide and Independence Pass. And here we are now. In Colorado, 80% of our snow and rain fall here in the Rockies. We like having our snow in the mountains and the famous ski towns like Aspen. Oh, isn't it pretty? Oh, yes it is. You know, those people and farms along the eastern half of the state where it's really dry need water too. So for over a century, the east slope of Colorado has been diverting water from the west slope. In fact, I think there are over 17 diversions from the Colorado River alone to the east slope. Diversions? Like the one-day diversion pass at Six Flags? Not exactly. I'm talking about water diversions. Taking water from one place where it would normally flow and making it go somewhere completely different. So this frying pan Arkansas project, that's where we're flying today? Yeah, it's a pretty important diversion. The Fry Art project starts here, with the town of Basalt along the Frying Pan River just north of Aspen. The river flows west, down from the Continental Divide, to Basalt, where it joins the Roaring Fork River. Oh, hey! You know, now we're talking about fishing. I know something about the frying pan. It's over 40 miles long and a gold medal fishery, one of the state's finest. That's what I hear. Flows in the frying pan are largely managed by releases from Rudai Dam and Reservoir. Did you know that President Eisenhower used to fish up here? No kidding. Well, I heard once he caught a... Hey, look at that big dam! <laughs> Rudai Reservoir is created by one dam, which is just under 300 feet tall. It stores up to 102,000 acre feet of water. I've heard about one acre foot. One acre foot of water is enough to fill the infield at Kerr's Field. It's also enough to serve two American families of four for a year. Did you also know that the 102,000 acre feet of water in Rudai is just for use on Colorado's West Slope? No kidding! Why'd they do that? Originally, Colorado's West Slope objected to proposals for the Fry Art Project because they would lose water. Rudai was designed as a compromise. So you're saying if it weren't for the Rudai Reservoir, the Fry Art Project could not have been constructed? That's exactly what I'm saying. Water stored in Rudai helps compensate for the Fry Art Project's East Slope diversions made further upstream. Speaking of upstream, here we are, the Frying Pan River Valley just above the Rudai Reservoir. As we fly up south along the river valley, we are passing small diversion dams on creeks like Carter Creek, Chapman Gulch, and Granite. Some of them, like Cunningham, have up to three separate diversions each. All of these diversions are located at elevations around 10,000 feet. Every spring, Reclamation's crew has to plow snow, then drive, snowmobile, or snowshoe hike into some of these sites to manually open the gates. The crew opens them in early spring. Then, when snow melts and starts to run down the river, the water drops through the grate into a tunnel below it. Flowing via gravity down the slopes that form this valley, the water then travels three miles upstream through either the Nast or the South Fork Tunnel. Both of those tunnels end right here at the Frying Pan River Diversion at the top of the valley. Is this true? Under this diversion dam is a small concrete room? It is, it is. It's called an adit, and it's right here under the Alpine Valley. Pretty impressive engineering, don't you think? The water collects here before it enters the Boosted Tunnel. The Boosted Tunnel is what moves water under the Continental Divide. It takes water from the west slope of the Rockies to the east slope of the Rockies. On the east side, this water will now flow down the Arkansas River and eventually into the Mississippi River and Gulf of Mexico. This concrete line tunnel is five miles of water redirection. You know it's a bit creepy in this diversion. Water flows through this tunnel at speeds up to 950 cubic feet per second. A cubic foot is roughly the size of a standard basketball. But weighs a lot more. Imagine 950 basketballs rushing by you every second. That's the carrying capacity of this tunnel. Where are we at now? On the other side of the divide. When water exits the Boosted Tunnel, it moves down a short channel and enters Turquoise Reservoir, or the locals call it, Turquoise Lake. Oh, there's a lot of boating, fishing, and camping around this lake. 
The lake was already in existence by the time Reclamation started building the Fryar Project. So, from 1965 to 1968, Reclamation enlarged the reservoir and built the dam that now impounds it, Sugarloaf Dam. Look on the other side of the reservoir, you can see the town of Leadville. It's the highest town in the continental United States. And Sugarloaf Dam, which is right in front of us now, is over 2,000 feet long and roughly 135 feet high. From it, water can go two ways, down Lake Fort Creek to the Arkansas River or into the Mount Elbert Conduit. Look at this terrain. This Arkansas Valley is beautiful and full of wildlife. Tremendous opportunities for big game hunting like those big elk and deer. Oh, and mountain lion and bear too. That's pretty cool. It's also a good place to build a long tunnel for water. The Mount Elbert Conduit is almost 11 miles long and can carry up to 370 cubic feet per second of water. It's 12 feet in diameter and concrete lined. Well, where's it taking the water? South from Turquoise Reservoir, just east of Mount Massive, along the Continental Divide until it reaches... I know! Mount Elbert Forbay! You're right, but west. Not many people know about the Forbay. Oh, I do. It's the smallest reservoir on the Friar Project, and I'll tell you a secret. It's got great fishing. Hey, how'd you know about my secret? Shh, don't tell anyone. You just told a whole plane full of people. But the Forbay is known for something else, too. It stores up head, or energy, for power generation down below at the Mount Elbert power plant. If you look out the windows on the right side of the plane, you can see Mount Elbert, Colorado's highest peak at 14,439 feet. Both the power plant and the Forbay are named for it. The Mount Elbert Power Plant is also Colorado's largest hydroelectric plant. We're going to circle Twin Lakes now, flying east to west to get a good look at it and its unique operating system. If that's the case, I won't take this moment to serve our guests a beverage. I wouldn't yet. For being the state's largest, the hydro plant is sure difficult to see from this altitude. But look, there it is, on the north shore of the Twin Lakes. Water stored in the forebay just up above drops down to the power plant through two water pipes called pinstocks to the plant below. Inside the plant, two stacked units, a turbine on the bottom and a generator on top, take the energy from the falling water and use it to generate power. Water turns the turbine, which spins the generator, which houses a giant magnet, creating an electromagnetic field as it spins, making electricity. Oh my, let there be light. Exactly, then reclamation. No, no, D. There needs to be light. You accidentally switched off the cabin lights. Ooh, sorry about that. Here, this better? Oh, yes. Much better. Okay, then. We've just flown over the Twin Lakes Dam and the Lake Creek into the airspace above the Arkansas River. Soon, we'll be over the town of Buena Vista. But I haven't even told you the best part about the Mount Elbert Power Plant. You mean there's more? Absolutely. Mount Elbert is a pumpback generating unit. What that means, Wes, is once Reclamation has generated hydroelectricity, it can throw those same units into reverse, pump the water back up to the forebay, and drop it down again to make electricity a second time. Wow, that is cool. A real renewable resource. We're starting to fly over Salida and about to move into the canyon areas carved out by the Arkansas River. There'll be a lot of tight turns and a lot of updrafts, D. You need to have both hands on the wheel. Fair enough. You better take over the tour then, West, and tell us about this river. Oh, I was hoping you'd say that. They don't call me West Waters for nothing. Well, I should hope not. Folks, I'd like to welcome you to the mighty Arkansas, one of the most popular recreation rivers in the nation and the most heavily rafted river in the world. Whoa, I didn't know that. You bet. In any summer season, over 200,000 guests are guided down the Arkansas River. That is a lot of rafting. Right, and that's just from the professional outfitters. That's not including private trips or even kayaking. Wow. The most popular whitewater sections of the river are near the Colorado rafting and kayaking towns of Buena Vista, Slida, and Canyon City. We're flying over some of those sections now. Pine Creek, the Numbers, the Narrows, Brown Canyon, Bighorn Sheep Canyon, and Rogue Gorge. You can see the Rogue Gorge out of the right side of the plane. Hey, I, I bungeed off that bridge once. Oh, no, you didn't. Okay, I didn't, but I wish I did. Also known as the Grand Canyon of the Arkansas, the gorge is narrow and deep. The width across the river is only 50 feet. 
The top of the gorge is several hundred feet wide, but from the top to the bottom is a 1,250 foot drop. We're out of the mountains now, West, flying over Canyon City. Yes, we are, Dee. I think this is a good time to talk about fishing. You know, the Arkansas is basically 150 miles of fishable river from its headwaters to Pueblo Reservoir. I did not know that. It also averages about 2,000 fish per mile. You don't say. Oh, now I really need a drink. Oh, look, Pueblo Reservoir. Oh, another great spot for fishing. That's true, West, but Pueblo is also important because it is the last stop for water moving through the Frying Pan Arkansas project. So all that water diverted from the West Slope has ended up here? Yes, it has. About 54,000 acre feet a year of West Slope water gets delivered right here on average. We're approaching the dam now. It's about two miles long with an overflow spillway supported by 23 concrete buttresses. It's a big dam. Oh, that makes sense. It's a big reservoir. Yes, it is. One of the top five biggest in the state. It can store up to 347,000 acre feet of water. Well, who uses that water? Customers from Colorado Springs to Pueblo and all the way out to Lamar on the eastern border with Kansas. Roughly, it's nine counties in eastern Colorado, 200,000 irrigated acres, and three quarters of a million people overall. Wow, that's some project. I agree. And now we've reached the section of the Arkansas River that flows through the city of Pueblo. The city of Pueblo is located downstream of Pueblo Dam at the confluence of the Arkansas River and Fountain Creek. It's been an important crossroads for over a century. Especially when it comes to transportation and trading. Exactly. In fact, Pueblo has been the economic hub of southeastern Colorado since the late 1800s. And agriculture has played a big role in that. You can see why the Frying Pan Arkansas Project was necessary. You got it, West. In fact, when people down the Ark Valley were searching for a way to get supplemental water for the irrigation season, the group that formed to support those efforts was located right here in Pueblo. The Southeastern Colorado Water Conservancy District. That's the one. So, where are we going now? A D? We seem to be losing altitude. Are we landing at the Pueblo Airport? Because that's not on our flight plan. Nope. Then D, we shouldn't be this close to the ground. Don't worry about it, Wes. I am worried about it. We're heading right for that building right there. You're a good navigator, I have to say. Oh my gosh, we're gonna crash. Is this because I didn't serve any beverages? It's okay, Wes. I'm sure once we're inside, there'll be plenty of water. Inside what? The Southeastern District Office. And here we are. Prepare for landing, Wes. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jim Broderick, the Executive Director here at Southeastern Colorado Water Conservancy District. I hope you enjoyed your virtual flight over the Fry Ark Project. Over the last 41 years, it's been used to import over 2 million acre feet of water into the Arkansas Basin. Just to give you an idea, that's over 682 billion gallons. Here at the district, one of our jobs is to allocate water from the Fry Ark Project. That's just a technical term that means we distribute the water to the people within the district boundaries. The water from the Fry Ark Project supplements irrigation on approximately 265,000 acres of farmland. It also supplements water supply for many of our municipal and domestic partners who directly provide water to over 720,000 people. The project also generates and transmits hydroelectric power and energy, serving over a million homes over the last 41 years. The project supports fish and wildlife and is used for whitewater rafting and boating and has protected us from devastating floods. So even though we call it a project, it's been a monumental undertaking. On behalf of the district, thank you for your interest in the Fry Ark Project and your investment in water, truly the lifeblood of our communities.